we can classify organic reactions into an exhaustive list of six types. Each of the classes is characterized by certain required structural motifs, such as the double bond and addition chemistry. In this video, I'm going to focus on arguably the simplest of the six acid-base reactions. Although the process appears very simple, a proton simply moves from one atom to another, whether such a process is favorable depends on a number of factors that I'll discuss in the video. Acid-base reactions are also known as proton transfer, and because the proton has a positive charge, proton transfer reactions always involve the shift of charge from one atom to another. There are two cases to consider depending on the total charge of the reactants. Case 1 involves positively charged compounds, and case 2 negatively charged species. The coloring here is deliberate. In order for a proton transfer reaction to proceed in the forward direction, the blue charged species must be more thermodynamically stable than the red charged species. Another way of saying that is that the blue species must be lower in energy than the red species. A key assumption here is that the black neutral species essentially all have the same energy. Using that assumption, we can ignore the neutral compounds when considering proton transfer reactions. Focus only on the charged species. So the question arises, how can we compare the stability of charged species? Well, one way is to use factors like electronegativity, hybridization, resonance, and quality of solvation to predict the more stable species on abstract grounds. For instance, in the reaction shown here, we can see that the transfer of a proton from carbon to nitrogen is the forward process. Considering resonance possibilities in the enolate anion, that's the product anion in blue, we would expect it to be more stable than the nitrogen anion starting material. In fact, if we draw the resonance structure, we place the negative charge on an oxygen atom, which is happier with negative charge than nitrogen on electronegativity grounds. These abstract arguments are nice, but organic chemists have verified these ideas with experiments. Imagine we took a series of compounds and treated them with a common base, let's say water. We could then measure the extent of proton transfer of each compound to the water using the equilibrium constant, or K, of the reaction as a measure of relative acidity. More acidic compounds will give up protons more easily, leading to larger Ks. Because equilibrium constants can be dramatically huge, let's take the logarithm of this K to make the numbers more manageable. The log is multiplied by negative 1 to make the vast majority of pKa's positive. Ks less than 1 are common because most protons don't just fall off spontaneously. This experimental measure of acidity, pKa, can be used to directly compare the stability of charged species. If the pKa of HA1, for instance, is lower than the pKa of HA2, we can say with confidence that HA1 will willingly surrender a proton to A2- because the neutral product, HA2, is unlikely to give its proton back to A1-. This means that the charged species A1- is more stable than the charged species A2-. Although there isn't much math in organic chemistry, being calibrated on the most important numbers in organic is important, and pKa is one of the most important numbers to organic chemists. Here are a few pKa's of common functional groups and compounds. Use a table like this to calibrate yourself on the relative acidity of common structures. As you do, try to rationalize why certain functional groups are more acidic than others. For instance, it makes perfect sense that carboxylic acids are much more acidic than ketones because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Finally, I'd like to close with some justification for studying pKa's. In many cases, pKa is directly related to reactivity. pKa measures acidity, which is the tendency of an atom to release a positively charged proton but there's a very similar process that involves releasing a different positively charged group, whatever it may be. Similarly, basicity is just the tendency of a lone pair on an atom to grab a positively charged proton, but basicity is related to the attack of a lone pair on a general electrophile R+. So knowing pKa's will help you predict and support these kinds of electron flow which abound in organic reaction mechanisms. In fact, we'll see both of these kinds of arrows in the next few videos on substitution and elimination chemistry.